One thing you're going to look at in your reading here of this section for the reading quiz or activity that you're given is we want to find the average rate of change in the value over, I'm sorry, of the car or automobile over um, several input intervals. In other, wo in other words, several of these, like from 2 to 5 we did here, um, over here, and then maybe a couple others. We're just going to do two more, maybe from 5 to 10 and from 7 to 10. We'll look at, let's take the average rate of change of those, um, of the, sorry, of the value of the car over a couple of intervals. So let's say, what's the average rate of change here from, of the car, the value of the car from year 5 to year 10 after the year 2000. Well, we would use that pair and that pair, and the average rate of change is, in fact, defined this way. So the slope and the average rate of change for these lines that are produced are actually have the same value. Um, but let's take a look at this. So we would take um, from 5 to 10 here. That's so what we want to do. From 5 to 10. So we're going to look at from 5 to 10. And so from there to there, we would take 8 minus 23 divided by 10 minus 5. So let's see, 8 minus 23 is negative 15 divided by 10 minus 5. That's a positive 5. So negative 15 over positive 5. What does that give us? Well, it gives us that. So negative 3 there. Uh, as was the case up here, negative 3 when we looked at from there to there. Let's do another one. Let's do from 7 to 10 here. So from years, from 2007 to 2010, what's the average rate of change for there? So we would take that minus that. That's a um, negative 9. And then that minus that, which is a 3. So we get negative 9. Look at over 3. And that also is a negative 3. That's a page number. So it looks like almost for any interval here, we're always getting an average rate of change of negative 3. And that's true. It's going to be true. There's a couple others. You could do 2 and 7 and 2 and 10. And you'll see that's negative 3, 2 between those years. And here's the thing we want you to look at is that when you have an average rate of change between any set of points on a data, such as we have here, and if it's the same for each pair, then what we have is what we call a linear function. And that's the definition you're going to read about, is that a linear function is defined to be, over on your first page, a function is said to be a linear function if the average rate of change is constant. Is constant for all pairs of data points within a given situation. And I'll say uh, remains the same. You can think of it that way too. It remains the same or is the same for all pair of points. So once you have that, then you know you have a linear function.